This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about how Bitcoin miners and Bitcoin mining are helping to save endangered gorillas in Africa. This is very different from the anti-environmental narratives that you'll normally hear about Bitcoin. We're going to be talking about the Virunga National Park, which is located on the eastern side of the Democratic Republic of Congo, very close to Uganda, Rwanda, and Burundi. This is a very significant park. It's home to over 1,000 species of mammal, bird, reptile, and, am and amphibian, as well as a third of the world's endangered mountain gorillas. This park looks really cool. It contains savanna, it contains uh, volcanic plains, and it's over 3,000 square miles. So it's a very significant park. Now, the bad news over the past few years has been Ebola outbreaks in the area, COVID lockdowns, and as a result, collapsing tourism revenue. But the good news is that now the park's conservation efforts are being funded largely by Bitcoin miners who are using excess electricity from three hydro plants in the park. Now, it's important to notice that these are stranded energy sources and that when you try to send electric electricity over long distances, it dissipates. So it's not something that you can really export over very long distances. It maxes out at around four, 400 or 500 miles. And so the argument I would make here is, do Bitcoin miners actually waste energy if they're using electricity that would otherwise not be used? This is a question that Bitcoin energy critics will never answer. Also, what happens if the local population's energy needs grow around Virunga National Park? It's very easy to shut off the Bitcoin miners and move them to a different location and then divert the hydropower electricity to the local economy. This is very much of a counter narrative to what you normally hear, but this is a great example, I think, of how Bitcoin mining helps to create jobs, how Bitcoin mining incentivizes energy infrastructure build out, and how Bitcoin mining monetizes stranded energy. You can read the full article in the MIT Technology Review, which I will link to in the description notes below. This is a fascinating article. At the same time, I wanted to draw your attention to a company that I'm not sure we've covered. It's called Gridless, and they power Bitcoin mining in rural Africa. They call it distributed run of river hydroelectric Bitcoin mining in rural Africa. This is being funded uh, in part by Jack Dorsey. And it says here that Gridless designs, builds, and operates Bitcoin mining sites alongside small-scale renewable energy producers in rural Africa where excess energy is unused. Gridless serves as the anchor tenant, financing the construction and managing the operation of data centers in rural communities where traditional industrial or commercial customers are unavailable. There's a great video here of what one of the micro hydro plants that they've built in Kenya looks like. So you can see this is very local. This has a very low impact on the environment and it's very good for local populations. So just as we're discovering how amazing Bitcoin mining is for monetizing stranded and unused energy sources, providing funding for poor rural communities around the world in parts of North America, South America, Africa, Asia, Europe, Eurasia, etc., preventing unnecessary natural gas venting. We've made videos about this before. Monetizing landfill methane, which has a much higher impact than carbon, if that's something that you're worried about. Just as we're discovering all these amazing things that Bitcoin mining is good for, what is Vitalik Buterin and Ethereum? What do they do? Hold my beer, we're moving to proof of stake. And this is what they did in the merge in September of last year in 2022. By contrast, when you compare Bitcoin mining to the Ethereum economy, you can see how fake and financialized the Ethereum economy is and how they do a lot of virtual virtue signaling about their energy usage, but they actually don't do anything good for the world. This is a purely financialized thing. You stake your 32 ETH if you have that much money and you earn interest on your unregistered securities until the SEC shuts you down. So by moving to proof of stake, Ethereum has also really flagged themselves as being a security. And it's important to notice in this in this context of the environment and conservation that that 32 ETH that you need to stake in order to become a validator on Ethereum, that is money that could be used instead to build solar farms, wind farms, nuclear power plants, whatever you like. It's important to remember that capital is fungible and mobile. And Ethereum's proof of stake is actually locking up perfectly good capital in a worthless scheme. And the great irony, of course, is now that scheme has made ETH 
a government captured coin. We can see here that over the past day, 71% of Ethereum blocks are enforcing US Treasury OFAC compliance. Over the last 30 days, it's approximately the same percentage. 68% of the blocks are enforcing US government compliance. This is just unbelievable. It's one of the sad byproducts of moving to proof of stake. I'm sorry, but I can't resist linking to this video that shows Vitalik Buterin doing some mining of his own. Uh, I'll link to it in the description notes below if you want to see what he's up to picking his nose. If you want to know more about how Bitcoin mining is good for the environment, I will also link to this video in the description notes below. And this is the video where I talk about how Bitcoin miners are helping to prevent the unnecessary venting or flaring of natural gas and landfill methane gas. So I'd encourage you to view this video and share it with people who criticize Bitcoin's energy usage. There's a lot of misunderstandings about proof of work and proof of stake, but I think stories like this, especially stories about this park in the Congo, are a really nice way of approaching it to people who don't know a whole lot about Bitcoin and crypto and just demonstrating how you can use local energy sources, stranded energy, stranded energy that would not otherwise not be used. You can use it for conservation and you can use it to support local populations and communities as well. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.